Welcome to Destructive Creativity. This is the first part of a feature series on 3D printing. 3D printing is becoming commonplace and is so cool. Let's go. I have been 3D printing things for years now. This was my first starter 3D printer. This is the Flashforge Finder, and it is a really good first time printer. I've recently upgraded to the Ender 5 Pro, which is so much fun, and we're having a lot of fun doing this. But before we get into the deep dive on what 3D printing actually is, my name is Jonathan Allers, and this is Destructive Creativity. We exist for you, for science, and for fun. So if any of those things appeal to you, make sure you click that subscribe button. We have new stuff coming out every single Wednesday morning. Okay, let's get into this. So what is 3D printing? Well, 3D printing is a blanket term that describes any way that you use a machine that either extrudes or fuses different materials to create models uh, that are have been digitally produced. And currently, the most common and the one that I use all the time is FDR, Fused Deposition Modeling. That's what this model is, the beginning, and the more advanced version of the FDR modeling 3D printer is. So what does that mean? Well, fused deposition modeling is where you take plastic, in this case PLA, polylactic acid, and you push this little string of plastic through a very hot tip. And that hot tip melts it down to just, just above its melting point and pushes it onto a plate. That plastic solidifies and hardens into a layer and then gets fused to the next layer and the next layer and all the way up to the top. Now, I have just finished printing off here something really cool. I'm just gonna take off this plate. Come on, there we go. So I just finished printing off Notre Dame's Cathedral, which is pretty cool. Let's just take this off here. There we go. And here is a scale model replica of Notre Dame's Cathedral. This is stunning. Now this isn't an instantaneous process. This actually took about 10 hours to print, but I mean, I just set it up while I was sleeping and I wake up in the next morning and there's a cool little model sitting on my 3D printer. All right, so how does this work? So let's describe exactly what's going on in a 3D printer. So this is where it all starts. This is where the spool of filament or PLA filament gets stored. And this is where you can load in different colors. I currently have white loaded in here, but you can have transparent purple, black, whatever color you want. The filament gets loaded into this unit right here, and this is the motor that feeds the filament to the heater. So the filament enters through here and goes through this tube all the way to this unit here, which is the heater. So this is the part that heats up the PLA filament, so it's warmed up to just above its melting point, and it can be in its liquid form and then fused with the other layers that it lays down. So this part here, moves the filament through this tube down into this heater. So now we have some liquid plastic just spewing out of this no nozzle, which isn't very useful. But this nozzle can move back and forth along this rail. And this entire rail moves along these two rails, which gives it a full field of being able to print anything in one sheet. So what happens is it prints off one layer and that one layer, think of it as like a piece of paper. So that one layer is in a specific shape and then the bed itself moves down one layer's width. Currently, I have this 3D printer set to be 0.2 of one millimeter. So every time it prints off one layer, the bed itself drops 0.2 of one millimeter, what the width of one layer, and then it prints off the second layer. And then you build up all of those layers enough times, and then you end up with anything you want, including things like Notre Dame's Cathedral. So what use is 3D printing? Well, it is cool. I mean, I can print off Notre Dame's Cathedral and I have this sitting on my desk, which is honestly very cool. But it's not just for entertainment purposes. And there are applications certainly for things like that. For example, I've printed off a complete set of Catan pieces, except for they're three-dimensional. So you can just stick them together and have like this would be wood and ore and etc. etc. That's one aspect. 
for a scientific side of things, this is an amazing resource to create things that aren't commercially available. You have to seize the means of production, except for not in a creepy Marxist way, in an awesome science way. So, for example, right now I'm working on designing and printing uh, different three-dimensional mazes to test the chemical intelligence of certain chemicals versus the uh, inhuman intelligence to see which one can solve a maze faster. All the way up to I'm printing off a electromagnetic levitation device, which is you can't buy anywhere. You can only make it and design it yourself. So scientifically, these are invaluable for creating prototypes. Granted, most people don't have that sort of application. That doesn't mean they're useless for your own personal use, even if you're not a scientific breakthrough type of person. You don't have to design things in order to use a 3D printer. There are thousands, probably millions of designs online that you can just Google for and then print off. For example, I needed a coat hanger. So I just Googled 3D printed coat hanger on Thingiverse. And there you go, you get the design you need to print off your very own coat hanger. When you download a virtual model online from say Thingiverse, um, you have to slice it for your printer. And when I say slice it, it means that there's a special computer program that actually divides that 3D model into hundreds or thousands of different slices. And each slice is only one paper thin layer on your 3D printer. And it's those slices that get printed before the model bed, before the bed on your 3D printer lowers down. FDR is the most common of 3D printing, that, and again, FDR is fused deposition modeling. And that's where, again, the filament goes through the tube, through the nozzle, gets warmed up, melts. You print a layer, the bed moves down, prints another layer, bed moves down, print another layer, all the way until you get a little dragon or Notre Dame's Cathedral. FDR is the most common, and it is the most scalable. So FDR, you can print things like chocolate, so not this specific machine, but they're 3D printing machines to make models out of chocolate, and then you can just eat them, which is amazing. You can scale this up to almost any size. There are FDR printers that print houses. So they come on site, they set, they set up a framework so that the, the nozzle can move around over a large area, and they just start pouring in a mixture of concrete. And that concrete can print walls, it can print floors, it is amazing! And some people believe that the FDR 3D printed houses are going to dominate the housing market up to 30% by 2050. So, I mean, this has life-changing applications for many, many people. But it's not the only method. There are different types of 3D printers that you can print off metal. Now that obviously wouldn't work in this situation because there's just too many limiting factors with FDR printing. But we're gonna cover that next time. We're actually gonna go take a look at a UV resin printer and explain all the differences there. This is Destructive Creativity. I'm Jonathan Allers. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure you hit that subscribe button. It really helps us out. And let me know down in the comments if you have a 3D printer at home. And if so, what model, what brand? I'm really excited to see what you guys have.